The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my, my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy, uh, or loving kindness rather, will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So, let's understand the sheep. It is like some dumb sheep, and it'll walk around in the field, and it'll go, oh, look at that hole. I think I'll fall in it. <laughs> and so, he jumps in, and <laughs> Shepherd comes along, stupid sheep. <laughs> and he takes that big crook, and he reaches down in that hole, and he wraps it around the sheep's neck and pulls him right up, puts him down, and says, Now be good. <laughs> okay, I will. Is he gone? Look at that hole. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> the Bible says you are sheep. <laughs> Well, let's let's understand sheep. Sheep tend to stray, get lost, and wander. Isaiah 53, verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to our own way. Um, we, we have some really, really awesome verses here that even reaffirm that. 1 Peter 2.25, for you were sheep, Going astray, but you now return under the shepherd, uh, the shepherd and bishop of your souls. There we are. We're the flock, the sheep. We, we tend to go astray. Another verse, Luke 15, 4 through 6. What man of you having a hundred sheep, talking now about shepherds, not the shepherd, but shepherds, if you lose one of them, don't you leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that one which is lost? Until he's found. And when you found it, lay him on his shoulder, rejoice. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for my lost sheep have been found. Sheep tend to wander. They tend to wander, tend to stray. They also tend to be stupid, you know. Look at the hole. <laughs> and fall in. in. In Isaiah 53 7, it says, As a sheep is before his shearer, the guy that's going to cut his hair, his, his wool, is dumb, he opens not his mouth. And as a sheep brought before the slaughter, it says, he doesn't open his mouth. You know, doesn't fight back. He just takes it. So the conclusion is, is that the church is equated to God's flock. Remember in, in John chapter 21 when Peter denied the Lord Jesus three times? Jesus reinstated him by saying, Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. And then what did he say? Feed my sheep. Tend my sheep. Be, be a human shepherd to the flock. Tend my sheep. Three times he said that in the reinstatement. So the church is equated to God's flock. And Almighty God, and I love this, is actively concerned for stupid, wandering sheep. He's concerned for you and me. Be excited about that? Amen. Dynamic, isn't it? You know? How many times do you have to fall in a hole before God walks away? It doesn't happen, does it? Because he is actively concerned for you and wants to keep with you. You know, wants you to stay away from the hole, yeah, but and maybe you'll learn. So see, we're better than that. 
So now what we want to do is we want to look at, at five specific aspects concerning God, the shepherd of the sheep. Today, though, we're only going to hit upon three, so we're going to have to revisit this. Even, even as exciting and familiar as this is, there's some really, really important things that are here. Now, this is a song, a Hebrew song, in the Hebrew poetry, about the shepherd. And that's important to understand. Sheep are not the focus, although they're in here. But the shepherd is the focus. It begins by saying what? The Lord is my shepherd. And you notice that it's the qualification, if you look in your Bibles, it's the qualification of the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And that's significant. We're talking about Jehovah. We're talking about Yahweh. We're talking about God Almighty. So it's not just one that we might, you know, like we read about Sarah calling her husband Abraham Lord. No, we're talking about, or, or as a regular subject we'll call the King Lord in that sense, we're talking about the Lord God. The one who said, let there be light, and there was light. Right? The one who sent his loving son into this world, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So this is the Lord. He's the focus. The Lord is my shepherd. He's a shepherd. So I have given you uh, some things inside your uh, your worship folder, some notes that you can kind of follow along of what we're going to talk about today from Psalm 23. And, then, and you, there you see there are three aspects of that. And so we're going to flash these on the screen so you can fill them in. But I really, I, I'm really praying that God will, will bring them to your heart in such a way. Because, I mean, this was an exciting time for me, you know. And what's even more exciting is I get to come back next week and talk even more about it. All right? Not so much about the stupid sheep. You know why? I'm part of that. I'm part of that. Remember, I'm just a delivery boy up here. So I'm part of you. I'm, I'm like you. So let's look at let, look at some of these. The, the first is that He provides for us. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. So what we learn first of all about our shepherd is that He provides for me. He provides for me. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He puts me beside still waters. Really amazing words that are here. So the shepherd is a needs provider. The shepherd is a needs provider. And that is vital. Because sheep are needy. Sheep are needy. Whether it's falling in holes, or finding a place to feed, getting water, even knowing where to go. Knowing where to go. Sheep and eat. I, I didn't do the video, but I did find one that for about a minute and a half showed, so, showed the sheep walking, and it was like a cartoon again, walking and as it was walking, it came to a cliff, and you know what it did? It just kept walking over the cliff. And it had like, for, like I said, for about a minute and a half, one sheep after another, boom, 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 you know? You think the second one or even the third one would say, whoa, you better stop. No, they kept going. Sheep are needy. They're needy. So, it says, I shall not lack, literally, is what it means in the Hebrew. I'll have what I need because the shepherd is this needs provider. Now, the fear of many potential sheep, and when I'm talking about people that become Christ followers, is that the, the shepherd will lessen my life rather than enhance it. 
In other words, things are going to be taken. You know, if I become a Christ follower, if I give my life to Jesus, if I become a Christian, then what's going to happen is that is that I'm going to have to live by rules. I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to do that. And, I'm, and my life is going to be lessened. And we don't see it as being enhanced. So fun is lessened. Money is lessened. Life joys are lessened, et cetera, et cetera. And you've heard it all before. But you see, folks, nothing could be further from the truth. And I can tell you that because of my walk as a Christ follower. I can tell you that because of many others who now walk as Christ followers. I can tell you that because you've heard testimonies of people even in this room of how their life has been enhanced and not lessened. So nothing could be further from the truth. John 10, 10 and 11 says that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came, Jesus said, that they might have life and have it abundantly. And then verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. That word abundant life, periosos is the Greek word and it means super abundant. <laughs> it means superior. It means excessive, preeminent, exceeding abundantly above there's more, more abundantly. It's advantageous. It's very highly beyond measure and more. That's where our life is in Jesus. So it's not torn away. It's not lessened. It's enhanced. It's enhanced. And then verse 2 goes on to say green pastures and quiet waters. And I want you to know these are very dynamic words. They are superior words. The green grass depicts refreshment. The still waters depict peace. See, the shepherd provides an enhanced life. This is a fun-loving, caring, providing, joyful shepherd. And you, know, and you know why? You know why? Because when you see him that way, you will love him all the more. And you will adore him all the more. And, and you will revere him all the more. Right? I see little kids when their dads and moms provide some things for them. I mean, don't they just beam? And, and a lot of times, you know what I see them do? I mean, even my, my little grandson, who's not that little anymore, 11 years old, goes running up to my son his dad when he gives him something and just loves on him. Just loves on him. Really, really exciting. And that's the way it is with you and I. Isaiah 40 verse 11 says he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms. Holding them close to his heart, he will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. And then Revelation 7, 17. For the lamb on the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of life-giving water. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Folk, this is your shepherd. This is your shepherd. So shepherds labor long and hard for their flock. The eternal shepherd labors long and and hard for you. And the shepherd, folks, enhances, not lessens, your life. The shepherd is a needs provider. So he provides for me. Verse 3, he perfects me. Because it says here, he restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You see, his name is what's at stake here. Is that something? God said he will do this. Well, you better do it. His name's at stake. He perfects me, restoring my soul, leaving the path of righteousness. So the shepherd 
is a supreme counselor. In fact, I can even take it to another step. He's a supreme counselor psychologist. Psychotherapist, can I say it that way? Right? For some of you who may have gone to some of these ones and poured your stuff out to them. He is the supreme counselor. Because what he wants to do, he wants to restore you. Just put you back on the path of righteousness. So, the reason is sheep are wayward. That's why there needs to be restoration. Sheep are wayward. The Hebrew word for restore is to turn back. See, often we, as sheep, need behavior reversal. The shepherd can and will restore your wayward life. See, the issue is that sheep are not naturally righteous. They are unrighteous. We said it already, Isaiah 53, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. So you do realize, of course, as we're talking about sheep, talking about Christ's followers today. So nothing in you is righteous outside of Jesus Christ. Because it says also in Isaiah 64 that all of our goodnesses, can you think of the, of the greatest thing you've ever done? You know, as, as a Boy Scout, you know, maybe you helped an older woman across the street with her groceries. <coughs> or maybe you pulled off on the side of the road. I remember when I was um, just out of high school and I landed a job in kind of like the family business. It was my, my uncle that ran a garage. My dad worked for him. And so I, uh, I came along and this is where I started doing mechanical work. And so I, uh, I'm driving to work. This is down in Old Sturbridge Village in Massachusetts, in that area. So I'm driving from my hometown in Southbridge to Sturbridge, Fisdale, where the garage was. And as I'm driving, I saw the most awful sight of a vehicle coming the other way, flying off the road, just in front of me. They came and boom, right into the ditch. And boom, I pulled over right away, just to make sure that the person was okay, you know. And what a reward, I'll tell you, because, you know, here I was maybe, what, 18, 19 years old, and this uh, pretty young teenage girl comes running up and starts holding me, <laughs> hugging on me, you know, because she was scared of what just happened. I mean, it frightened her, you know. So I'm trying to make sure she's okay. You know, are there any bruises, any bumps, any, you know, broken, any, are you okay? But she came running up to me, so I was obviously she was all right. We waited for a bit until the police came by. But uh, I guess that was a good deed that I did. But as you think about your life and the very best thing that you have ever done, you know what God says? All of your righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Before Him. But we are not clean people. So we're talking about nothing in you being righteous outside of Jesus Christ. If you've made Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord, guess what? He's beginning to work His righteousness in you. He's making you um, sanctified or holy spiritually, positionally. I've said this before, when God looks at you, He sees His Son. If you've made Him your Savior. Listen to these words in uh, Romans 3, beginning in verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away, they've all together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are an open grave, their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. He's just narrowing it down that one verse about the mouth. Then he says, uh, their feet are swift to shed blood. They ruin, uh, ruin and misery mark their ways. The way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Those are strong words. 
sheep are wayward. Everything in, everything in God is righteous. The shepherd will bring you back. Why? For his name's sake. For his name's sake. You want to see how great the shepherd is? Become one of the sheep. He brings you back. Just like that one that wanders away. And the guy goes and gets him. And when he gets him, he doesn't paddle him. You know? Instead he holds him, loves him, carries him back, rejoicing, singing a song. My sheep's the back. I can see him now. Skipping along. My sheep's the back. My sheep's the back. God is this way. It's his name. God's name, the shepherd's name that's on the line. So, the shepherd longs to make his sheep righteous. He wants to make wayward sheep righteous. In Christ you have his righteousness in you. He provides for me, he perfects me, and then he protects me. He protects me. The, the, the shepherd protects you. Verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. You are with me. You ride your staff. They comfort me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. So the shepherd is a firm protector. He's always right there. Why? Because sheep are vulnerable. Sheep are vulnerable. You know, the Hebrew term for valley literally means gorge. Think of that. It's a gorge. Have any of you ever driven Route 4 out of Lebanon, White River Junction, heading toward Woodstock? There's a little community there called Quichi, right? Quichi, Vermont. And right there is Quichi Gorge. In fact, you drive right over it in Route 4. Any of you ever driven over it and looked down there? Whoa! Pretty <laughs> sweet. Yeah. Hey, Wayne. Want to go bungee cord jumping? Sure. Hey, I'll follow you lead. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> if the cord breaks, ouch. I'll be right behind you. I'll check you out. Uh, <laughs> so here, that, that gives you an idea of what this is talking about. It's a susceptible, here it comes, a susceptible place. A place where all kinds of helpless, defenseless, dangerous things can and will happen. That's what the valley is, the gorge. In this place, sheep are at risk. They're in a weak position and exposed. So, so they get weak in the knees. <laughs> sheep. Poor sheep. Now I've heard that if sheep fall over on their backs, they can't get up. So I googled this and I found these words by someone overseas, over in, in uh, the British Isles, who grew up on a sheep farm. And, and this is what they say. And, and as I read this, I want to show you a little clip. Many sheep die from lying on their backs too long. Farmers have come have to check on their flocks twice every day to check that their sheep haven't rolled over on their backs. Because if they do, some of them will find it hard to get up. <coughs> you would see them struggling helplessly with their four legs in the air. So you would then roll them back over and they would be groggy for a few and then head back to their stuff. They don't tend to appreciate that you saved their lives though, <laughs> is what he says, with a LOL. And I'm not sure what it is they die of. I think it's suffocation, the inability of the heart to circulate and blood properly in that position, but I know that I have a window of a few hours to save its life after it's fallen on its back. Please, he says, help any sheep. Or go, you see on their back, because they have great difficulty getting up. You saw it, right? That's the, uh, the video I was talking about. You gotta see it, you know? When I saw it, I said, whoa. So, the shadow of death 
is also part of this. Not only the valley, but the shadow of death. Because these are amazing words. The Hebrew word means grave. And, and sheep are always and simply, naturally, always at risk. It's always like they have one foot in the grave. Sheep always need a shepherd. Jeremiah 23, 3 and 4. Speaking of Israel in these terms. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them. And I will bring them back to the fold. And they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will sh set shepherds over them who will care for them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Ezekiel 34, verse 8. As I live, declares the Lord God, surely, because my sheep have become a prey, and my sheep have become food for all wild beasts, since there was no shepherd, and because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep, but the shepherds have fed themselves, and have not fed my sheep, verse 11, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep. I will seek them out as a shepherd seeks his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered. So I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on the day of clouds and thick darkness. And it goes on. I'll tell you, there's some great words here. Verse 13 down to 16. Really amazing. I'll bring them out from the peoples, gather them from the countries. I will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel. Uh, they shall lie down there and graze in this land on a rich pasture. They shall feed the mountains of Israel. And I myself will shepherd my sheep. I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak. And the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Great words, huh? God cares for his weak, vulnerable sheep. And then back in chapter 23 of Psalm, verse 4, he says, He'll fear no evil. His rod and staff comfort. And here are more amazing words. Because the word comfort means to pity. Pity. You know, he looks upon them. Instead of demeaning the fact that they are stupid sheep. And by the way, sheep smell. So, he doesn't say stupid, smelly sheep. He pities them. They need me, is what he says. And so the word also comfort also means avenge. Not only pity, but avenge. In other words, he'll go for you. It's almost like it's almost like the child that goes, you know, uh, to some sort of sporting event at school, and uh, whether he plays on the baseball team or whether she might be on the lacrosse team or whether they run or whether they're in a play or something like that. Mom and dad are there, and I'll tell you that makes the kid the happiest. They'll look out in the audience and see the parents sitting there. Avenging for them, right? Being there. Rooting for them. That's what it is. Sheep always need avenging. Micah 5, 4 in the uh, contemporary English version. Like a sheep taking care, uh, or rather like a shepherd taking care of a sheep, this ruler <coughs> will lead, of course it's speaking of Jesus, and care for his people by the power of in the glorious name of the Lord, his God. His people will live securely, and the whole earth will know his true greatness. So the shepherd keeps safety, safety a priority for his flock, because sheep are susceptible creatures, susceptible to sickness, to death, to hardships. But you see, we have a shepherd that lightens fear, and protects constantly. Constantly. So here's this familiar psalm. The first uh, four verses, we're going to hit on five and six next time and give you some more bits of information that are pretty exciting. These familiar 
words for so many reasons. You know, they've probably been a comfort to you. They probably were part of your Sunday school memorization as a kid. You know, or maybe family devotion time. Or maybe even just your parents may have had a plaque hanging in the house. I see some of you shaking your head. 